26. 26. So 26 cards are black, right? And 26 cards are red. Now there are special names. This particular symbol is called club, right? Now this symbol is called spade. And this is called heart. This is called diamond. So this card will be called as ace of club, right? This is ace of spade. This is ace of heart. This is ace of diamond. This is five of diamond like this. And if I call this, so this is queen of diamond. This is queen of heart, queen of spade, queen of club like this. Jack of heart, jack of spade. So I hope it's clear now. Yes. So there are total, you can see four ace cards are there, right? And number cards are, so there are nine this side and then four. So nine into four, that means 36. 36. And face cards will be three into four, that is 12. So 12 face cards are there. Okay, so let's come to questions. I think this, you can take a picture if you wish or, or it's available on, like you can search on net also. Okay. Right, so let's start with question number 14, which is actually based on cards. One card is drawn from a well shuffled deck of 52 cards. Okay, so now what is happening here? Total cards are 52, right? I'm drawing out one card at random. So that means it can be any card, right? So my possible outcomes are 52. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Number of possible outcomes is equal to 52 in this case. Now first, I want to find the probability of getting a king of red color. Sorry, color, right? Okay, so uh, I'll write number of favorable outcomes. are how many now it should be a king right and it should be of red color so how many king are there of red color two, two right one is king of heart one is king of diamond so my favorable outcomes are two sara is this clear yes ma'am so the probability of a king of red color is equal to number of favorable outcomes, which are two divided by number of possible outcomes, which are 52. So you can divide this by two. So it will be one by uh, 26, right? Okay. Time. Second, uh, what is the probability that it is a face card? So you write number of favorable outcomes this time. So it is just a face card, right? So they are not saying it is black or it is red or it is art or diamond or anything, just a face card. So it can be any of the face cards. So how many face cards are there in total? 12. 12, right? It can be any of the face cards. So all are my favorable outcomes. So the probability of a face card is 12 by 52, which is again, uh, you can divide, so 6 by 26 and then 3 by 13, right? So Sarah, you can divide numerator and denominator both by 2, so you get this. Yeah. Third, right? Uh, you have to find a probability of a red face card. Now, it has to be a face card, but it has to be red. So, how many number of favorable outcomes are there? Six. Sara, can you tell me? Six. 
six, six, right? Because face cards that mean three face card of heart and three face card of diamond. That means six. Yeah. Okay. So probability of a red face card is equal to number of favorable outcomes are six. Possible outcomes are fifty-two. So you divide this by two. So three by twenty-six. Yes, ma'am. Okay, fourth part. Probability of um, the jack of hearts, right? So, Sarah, jack of heart. How many are there? One. One. There's only one jack of heart. Right, so number of favorable outcomes are only one. There's only one jack of heart. So probability of a jack of heart is one by fifty-two. Right, Harsha, Hamna. Okay, fifth. A spade. How many spade are there? Hamna, how many spade are there? Okay, Sara, how many spades are there? Um, 13. 13, okay, good. So the probability of uh, a spade is 13 divided by 50. Spade means, you know, second line. So one ace card, then your nine number cards from two to 10, and then three face cards. So second row, basically. Each row is 13 in number. So 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13, 50. Six. Uh, the queen of diamonds. How many queen of diamonds are there? One. One, there's only one queen, correct? Yeah, ma'am. Okay, so the probability of queen of diamond will be only one by 52. Okay, next question, number 15. Now, five cards, the 10, Jack, Queen, King, and Ace of Diamonds are well shuffled. So you have five cards now. One is 10, and then you have a Jack. Then you have a Queen. There's a King, and there's an Ace, right? And all are diamond, okay? So they are similar category cards. All are diamonds. Are well shuffled with their face downwards, okay? One card is then picked up at random. So random means, Sarah, we don't know. Like, uh, we cannot predict the answer. That means from backside, all the cards are looking the same. So we don't predict the result. So that means it's a fair uh, selection going on. Understood? That is the meaning of random. There's no hint of any kind, there's no indication, there's no mark on any card. So the result is not biased, it's completely fair. So it's, a, it's called a random uh, selection. So one card is then picked up at random. Now first, what is the probability that the card is the queen, right? So number of possible outcomes are how many? Five. five. You have five cards, right, Sarah? Yeah. You are picking up one card. So it can be any card you don't know. So possible outcomes are five. Now you want a queen card. So how many queen cards are there? One. Only one. So your favorable outcome out of five, your favorable is only one, right? So the probability of, uh, let's say, getting a queen is just one out of five, one by five. That's it, sorry, one by five.
Now, second case is interesting. If the queen is drawn and put aside, okay, what is the probability that the second card picked up is an ace? Now, we have done this uh, selection. So, for example, I got a queen, right? Uh, no, no, it's saying if the queen is drawn and put aside. So, like out of the cards, I'm just uh, putting aside this queen. So, how many remaining cards are there now? One by four. No, no, how many remaining cards are now? Four. Only four. So, I have just picked aside this queen. So, now I have only four cards. So, now possible outcomes can be four only. Right? So, see, yes. uh, sometimes like without writing, even without writing, you can guess the answer. Uh, actually, that should be. But in the exam, you have to write it, right? So, that is why uh, you should learn how to represent the answer also. So, that is why I'm writing uh, each sentence here. Correct? Okay. Yes. So, num because there's a terminology, so possible outcome, favorable outcome, etc. So, in those terms, you have to write. The number of possible outcomes are four now. Now, what is the probability that it is an ace card? So, how many cards are remaining? One ten, one jack, one king, one ace. How many ace you can see here? One. Only one. So, my favorable outcome is only one, right? So, the probability of getting ace is one by four, okay? Because there are four cards now. A part. B part is uh, getting a queen. Now, how many number of favorable outcomes? Sara? Four. Oh, oh. You, you want a queen, right? Zero. Zero. There's no queen now, right? Right, Arsha? Hamna? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Number of possible outcomes are four, and out of these four, there's no queen. So my favorable is zero. So the probability of getting queen is actually zero by four. That is zero. Mm Now, question number 16. 12 defective pens are accidentally mixed with 132 good ones. Okay, so how many total number of pens are there? 144. So there, yeah, 12 defective plus 132 good ones. So 144 pens are there. It, it is not possible to just look at a pen and tell whether or not it is defective. So this line is actually important. So it means that uh, there's no hint of any kind, right? If you are picking out a pen, so you cannot predict whether it's going to be a defective one or it's going to be a, a good one. So it's a completely fair, uh, you can say selection, okay? So that is why this line is written. One pen is taken out at random from this lot Determine the probability that the pen taken out is a good one. Okay. So you want to find the probability of a good pen. Okay. So you can say number of favorable outcomes are how many? So total possible outcomes are 144, right? You are picking out one pen. It can be any pen. Out of 144, it can be any pen. But you want a good pen. So how many favorable uh, outcomes are, can be there? See, 132 pens are good, isn't it? So this 132 is your favorable outcome. Fine, Sarah. Yes, ma'am. Yes? Or you can, I think... Just one minute. I think you should separately, before writing even the total number of pens, you, you should separately write down that number of defective pens is equal to uh, how much? 12. And then 
number of good pens is equal to 132. So total number of pens are actually 144. Or in terms of probability, you can say number of all possible outcomes is equal to 144, correct? If you use this uh, probability language. So possible outcomes are 144. Now I want a good pen, right? So number of favorable outcomes are how many? 132. 132, because 132 pens are good. So 132, so that means probability of a good pen is 132 and total pens are 144. Now you can just simplify this, divide by 2. So you get 2 into 6 is 12 and then again 6 divided by 72. Again you can divide, so 33 divided by 36, right? Now you can divide by 3, so 11 by 12. This is the program. Okay, next question now. Question number 17. A lot of 20 bulbs contain four defective ones. So how many total number of bulbs are there? 24. Read again. 20. 20, right, Harsha? The four defective are actually contained in this 20 bulbs, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, see the difference of 16 and 17. In 16, it was clearly written that, that 12 defective pens were mixed with this. So a lot of 20 bulbs contain four defective ones. So now you can write number of defective bulbs is equal to four. So that you can write number of good bulbs are how many? 20 minus four, that means 16. I don't know if it is required or not. Like I've just found out, right? These are the good bulbs. Anyway, uh, one bulb is drawn at random from the lot. What is the probability that this bulb is defective? Okay, so first case, number of favorable outcomes are how many? Sara. I want a defective bulbs. How many bulbs are defective? Four. four. So all four outcomes will be my favorable outcome. Okay. Yeah. So the probability of a defective bulb will be number of favorable outcomes divided by all possible outcome. Total bulbs are 20, right? Yeah. So you can like you can get any of the bulbs. So this is one by five. Hamna, I can't hear you. Please unmute your mic. Okay, second case. Suppose the bulb drawn in Ma yes. Yes. Sir. Ma'am, in this chapter is all the like you know calculations like this simple. Yeah, almost. Okay. Yeah. Because it's probability you are just division is involved. I think what else will be there? You have a formula, you know, one number is divided by the other. That's it. Right? Okay, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. So second part is interesting. Now pay attention. Suppose the bulb drawn in one is not defective and is not replaced. Right? Now, one bulb is drawn at random from the rest. What is the probability that this bulb is not defective? Okay. Uh, see, in the first case, what we were doing is, out of 20 bulbs, we were picking out one bulb, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But that bulb can be any bulb. It can be a defective bulb. It can be a good bulb, right? So, they are saying that, uh, 
is not defective that means it's a good bulb let's say in the case one the bulb which i picked out is a good bulb okay now uh, and is not replaced so that means this bulb i have already picked out so this is like now kept aside okay so how many bulbs are remaining now How much said it is not replaced, right? Okay, wait, wait. Suppose the bulb drawn in one is not defective. Okay, it's a good one and is not replaced. It's not replaced means it is not put back into the lot. Right, Harsha? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so out of 20 bulbs, I have already picked out one bulb. So I'm not replacing it into the collection. Understood, Sara? Yes, ma'am. So now the remaining bulbs are only 19, correct? Understood or not? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay. So, and is not replaced means that I'm not replacing it into the lot. Okay. Now, one bulb is drawn at random from the rest. So, see, it is written here also, Harsha. Now, one bulb is drawn at random from the rest. So, that means the remaining bulbs. Correct? Okay. What is the probability that this bulb is not defective? Okay. So, that means uh, in the case one, the bulb came out to be a good bulb. Right? So that means the four defective bulbs are all are still there in this 19. Is this understood? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so the 19 remaining bulbs contains the four defective bulbs, correct? So the number of good bulbs are how many? Or you can say number of not defective bulbs? 15. 15. So total 19 minus 4, so that is 15. So you want probability of uh, bulb, you can say, which is not defective. You can write good bulb also if you wish. So probability which is of bulb, which is not defective, will be 15 out of 19, correct? So all these 15 are my favorable outcomes. It can be your first bulb, it can be your third bulb, it can be any like out of 15, all these 15 outcomes are your favorable. So this is the program. Okay, next question, number 18. A box contain 90 discs, okay, which are numbered from 1 to 90. So, discs are containing numbers from 1 to 90. If one disc is drawn at random from the box, find the probability that it bears a two-digit number. Okay. So, out of 90, you are picking out one disc. So, the possible outcomes are how many? Number of all possible outcomes are 90, right? Yes, ma'am. So you can get any disk out of 90. All are possible outcomes. Now, first case, uh, your favorable outcomes uh, is a two-digit number. So you write number of favorable outcomes in this case, first of all. So you want only two-digit number. So how many favorable outcomes can be there, Sara? Um, 81. How? How you got it? Um, because see, there are discs, okay? So there are numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 11, 12, and like that up to 90, right? 
Yes, you want sir. you want discs which are containing only two digit number. That means these discs you don't want, right? How yeah. many discs are there? Nine discs, right? One to yes, nine. Sir. So that means out of this ninety, these nine discs you don't want. So only eighty one are your favorable outcomes, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the probability of um, a two digit number. On disk or don't write it. A two-digit number is eighty-one divided by nine. So nine into nine is eighty-one, and nine by ten. You can say this. Now, second case, a perfect square number. So you have to see between one and ninety how many perfect squares are there, right? So we start from one. One into one is one. Two into two, four. Three into three, nine. Four into four, sixteen. Then five into five, twenty-five. Six square is thirty-six. Seven square is forty-nine. Eight square is sixty-four. Nine square is eighty-one. Ten square is hundred. So that we don't want, right? Because it is not falling between ninety-one and ninety. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So how many? How many they are? Count nine. them. Okay. So all they are. Number of favorable outcomes are nine. You can count them, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. So the probability of a perfect square is favorable outcome divided by total possible outcome. This is one by ten. Okay, third number divisible by five. So please mention how many favorable outcomes. Number of favorable outcomes in this case. So the number should be divisible by five, right? So you can write all the numbers, or you can do it this way. Like in first column, there are two numbers which are divisible by five. Fine, Sara. Yes, ma'am. And up to ninety means you have nine columns. So simply two into nine you can do that is eighteen, right? Or yeah. you can separately write like five, ten, then fifteen and twenty and like that up to ninety, and then you count them so they will be eighteen in number, right? The number of favorable outcomes are eighteen. So the probability of um, you can say number divisible by five. Will be eighteen and total uh, are ninety. So divide by nine, so it will be two by ten, or again by two, so it will be one by five. Done. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next question number nineteen. A child has a die whose six faces show the letters as given below, right? So these are the faces: A, B, C, D, E, and again A, right? These are the faces. I mean, these are the letters written on the faces, and the die has six faces. You know that, right? It's a cube. Okay, Sara. Have you seen yes, a dice sir. ever? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um. So a die is thrown once. What is the probability of getting A? Right. So first of all, the die is thrown. So it you can get any face of the die. Right. So number of all possible outcomes are how many? Six. Six. Right, sir. Like you are throwing a die. So any any of the face you can get. So possible outcomes are six. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now number of favorable outcomes. So you actually want only A. How many A are there? 
two. Two. So both the two cases can be your favorable outcome, right? So okay. it it yeah. So both the cases are your favorable outcome. So the probability of getting A is two divided by six. That is one by three. Uh, this was first part and second part you have to find the probability of getting d right so again write number of favorable outcomes how many only one there's one d right yeah the probability of getting d is one by Okay, next question is like interesting question. Uh, question number 20. Suppose you drop a die at random on the rectangular region shown in the figure. So there's a rectangular region like this. Uh, what is the probability that it will land inside the circle with diameter? So there's a circle here, right? Whose diameter is one meter. And also the dimensions of this is given. So what is the probability that the die will land inside the circle? So how will you relate it with probability, Harsha? And we should find the area left. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Sarah, getting it? Yes, ma'am. So see, basically what is happening here, uh, this is this is the like uh, area on which I'm throwing my dies. So my die can fall anywhere, right? It can fall like here also, it can fall on the joint also, it can fall inside or circle also, anywhere it can fall. So this complete area is my like possible outcome, correct? It can be anywhere. So the complete area of the rectangle is my possible outcome, okay? But I want my die only inside the circle. I mean, I'm interested in finding this probability only. So only this much area is my favorable outcome. Getting it? Yeah. Okay. So that's how we will do it. So let us separately find out the area first of all. So area of rectangle is equal to, uh, that is length into breadth. So 3 meter into 2 meter, that is 6 meter square. Right, and you can mention the formula also length into breadth. Now, area of circle that is you know pi r square. So let's keep the answer in terms of pi because it's not mensuration, so we don't want exact you know numbers and decimals. So keep it pi. Now radius is how much? Diameter is one, so it will be one by two by meter. Two. Right. Okay, so this will be pi by four meter square. Okay, so now probability of, uh, what will you write? Mm, um, that the die drops inside the circle, right? Yep. I'm finding this, that the die uh, falls inside the circle. Inside circle, this probability. So that means my favorable area, that is, uh, pi by four meter square and divided by all possible area, which is six meter square, right? Okay. So meter square, meter square obviously cancels out here. And then there's nothing here. So it will be pi into one divided by four into six, right? So that is pi by 20. I hope it is clear. Yes. Okay. Now, before proceeding to the next question, uh, first of all, you should understand one thing. Next question is two dice uh, are thrown at the same time. So far, we were dealing with questions where we were using only one single die. Okay. Or one single coin. 
but now there will be questions where two coins will be tossed simultaneously like one from one hand and the same time we are tossing it so what can be the possible outcomes similarly if i throw two dice together what can be the possible outcomes now let's say uh, tossing two coins together tossing two coins together right okay so let us see possible outcomes now there are two coins okay so there can be a possibility that the first coin is giving me head right second coin is also giving me head correct or you write it h h okay harsha yes ma'am okay now second case is first coin is giving me head second coin i'm getting tail right okay third possibility first coin i'm getting tail second coin head fourth is first coin tail second coin also tail so these are the four possible outcomes in this case understood can you think of any other combination sara is there any other possibility no there is no other right either both are head both are tail or one head or one tail right yes ma'am that's it so this can be you can say two cases can be there the first is head second is tail or second is head or first is tail that's it okay now we come to toss throwing two dice together and let's see throwing two die together so die is plural die is singular right so one die has six faces that you know right numbers 1 to 6 or dots can be there or numbers can be there. okay now let's see what possible combinations i can get so let's say first die i'm getting one right second die also i'm getting one correct yes okay now first die i'm getting one second die i'm getting two right first yes. die i'm getting one second die three then first die one second die four now first die one second die five first die is one second die is six right now first die is can be two second die is can be one first die two second can be two two and three right first die two second four then two and five then 2 and 6 getting it so are you getting the pattern yes ma'am similarly i have my third die like first die can show number 3 second die can show number 1 right then i can get 3 2 then 3 3 3 4 and then 3 5 and 3 6 that means first die showing number 3 second die is show number 6 similarly four first die showing number 4 second die number 1 so these are the possible uh, results 4 and 5 no 4 and 4 sorry and then 4 and 5 and then 4 and 6 right now first die is 5 second die is 1 so this combination can be there now first die showing 6 second die showing 1 and then 6 2 6 3 6 4 6 and then 6 6 both die are getting 6 so these are the possible outcomes right sir harsha yes ma'am yes ma'am okay how many are there simple um, like six, six six this side and six this side right six into six thirty six so possible outcomes can be thirty six in this case so at least once you should write them in your copy right 
that what can be the possible outcomes yeah it's important because uh, you don't have to write it in questions but any anyway like at least once you should write it so that you remember So this 36 is actually possible outcomes, right? Okay, Harsha. Okay, so let's move to question number twenty two now. So there's a table given here two dies, you know, one, one blue and one gray. So there are numbers also like one die is blue and one gray, sorry, color uh, are thrown at the same time. Now complete the following table. So this is the event. Uh, the event is, event means sum of two dies, right? Okay. And then probability you have to write here. So you have to complete the table. So one by one, we will take up. So the first event is that the sum of the, which is already written. So I'm just showing how they are getting one by 36, okay. That the sum of two dies, sum of two dies means the number which is displayed on the dice, their sum is two, okay. So uh, this is the event that the sum is two, right. Now, which combination can give me sum two? Like first die, I get one and second die also I get one. And then I add one plus one. So that gives me two. So I think this is the only one possible combination where the sum is two, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So the probability will be one divided by 36, right? 36 can be the total possible outcome. Correct, Sarah? Yes, so, you, so now you remember this number 36. If two dice are thrown, the number of possible outcomes are 36. Now you already know. Okay. Next, I want my sum three. So the sum of the digits should be three. So which combination can give me this? Now, if I get one and two, right? This can be yes, one. Or on the first die, I get two. And second die, I get one. So I think these are the only two possible cases, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so my favorable outcomes are only two and possible outcomes are 36. So it will be one divided by uh, how much? 18, right? No, sorry, 12, not 18. 36 is 12. No. Sorry, two into one, then two. Yeah, I was right. Sorry. Right? Okay. Now next, you want sum uh, four. So sum I'm doing, then rest you will try yourself. Okay, I'm not doing the full table here. Now you want sum four. Okay, now which combinations can give you sum four? So I think uh, one number has to be... Okay, if you are taking one on the first die, then you should have three on the second one, correct? To get four, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then you are getting two on the one, then you should have two on the other one. Now, if you are having three on the one, and then you, the other should have one. Now, if you are having four, no, four and one will give you five. So I think only three combinations can be there, right? Harsha, am I correct? 
Yes, ma'am. Right, Sara. So because if I start with four yes. on the first die, so because there is no zero on the die, so this cannot be the case. So only three cases can be there. So the probability of favorable outcomes are three. Total thirty six. So it will be one divided by twelve. Uh, so like this, you can complete the table. So last, let's say eleven one I'm taking. So you want eleven as the sum, right? So let's say I get one on the first die. So maximum I can get six, right? And one plus six is seven. So this is not the case I want, correct? The sum yes, is max. Okay. In the second, if I'm taking two. And the maximum is here six, so again eight. So I cannot take this also. Now three on the first try and maximum six. That also gives me nine. So I don't want this. Then I take four here and maximum six. So this is again ten. I don't want this. So first try five, right? And second try is six if I take. So this can give me eleven, right? So this one one possible like favorable outcome. Now, first die if I have six, second die should have five. So this is another so two. I think are there only two, which can give you some eleven. So two by thirty-six will be the probability, right? Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you write like this, okay? P of some eleven. Like this, you have to find, like p of some four. So this way you can write it when you solve it. Okay, so I think one more case is there when you are tossing tossing uh, a coin. So you are tossing three coins together. I think that combination you also need in question. So let's see that combination also. So write another heading: tossing three coins together. So this also comes in exam. Right? Okay. Now let's see what can be the possible outcomes in this case. So write down possible outcomes. Right, so you start yeah. writing it like this. Now you have three coins. So the first case is first coin head, second coin also head, third coin also head. The simplest one. Okay. Okay. Now next can be the first coin head, second coin head, the third coin can now be tail. Correct. So basically, we shift this place, one's head and one's tail. Am I right? Yes. And then you have your H H T, right? Now, let's keep first uh, head, right? First is head, and uh, let's change the second one. So one time it's okay. Let's keep this. Like one time, third one is head. So I'm keeping this fixed, okay? Now, now first coin I'm keeping head, and the second, sorry, third coin is. Um, so second coin can be head also. No, 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 no. Sorry, that will give me the same result. Wait, wait, wait. So H H H okay H H T, then one can be that first coin is head. Now second coin is tail, and third coin is head. Is this correct? Yes. Okay. So three will actually start from H here, right? And then three will start from T. Now first coin can be tail, second coin can be head. 
and the third coin can also be head. T H H can be one combination. Then first coin is T. There yes. can be H T T also, right? H T T. Mm. Yeah, I think that will come up. Just just a minute. Let me see. Yeah, you are right. So first coin is tail. Sorry, first is tail, tail, and then second is head, and then you get T T H T. Right? I think this can be there, and then all our tail. This can be there. Yeah. So one is missing here. H H H. Right? H T T H T H. And you were saying H T T. Right? Yes. Yeah. So H T T can be also be there. The rest of the two can be tail. And here, what is remaining? So T H H I have taken T H T T T T, and T T H is remaining, right? Yes, Sara. Yes, right. Yes, sir. So if I write it in proper pattern, see the pro pattern is this. Sorry, like you write write like this, like H H H. Okay, then H H T. Now you shift this H T H. That's it, and then H T T. Are you getting the pattern? Yes. Sir. Yeah, and like I'm just shifting one time H T and then one time T H. So the first is H H and then T T. Right. Now the same. I'll just shift. So I'll write T here in all the four cases, right? And this time I get T T T. Okay. This time one T and H, and then one H and T, and then both H H. So I think it's a better way, right? So you can see the same pattern here, right? Right, Harsha? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I just forgot the pattern, like how to write it. So anyway, so total possible outcomes are how many? There are eight. So this also, please, like at least once you note down in your copy what can be the possible case. So I actually I have my next class now. So I, I'll take the remaining two, three questions in the next class. Can I have a um, test on Tuesday? Of this chapter? Uh, probability is also coming in exam, right? Sara, in your exam, I think it's coming. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So I'll do one thing. Um, no, no, but you have not finished the chapter. I think some other chapter I should take test of. Harsha, which chapter you want to revise? Um, coordinate geometry. Coordinate geometry, okay. Sara, is that okay? Coordinate geometry? Yeah. Hamna? Okay, so please note coordinate geometry. So last time you were making mistakes. So ha, ha, like Sarah, you made many mistakes, right? Please practice it again. Coordinate geometry test on Tuesday. I think it's 21st on Tuesday, right? 17 is Saturday. No. 18 is Sunday. 19, 20. Tuesday, anyway. Check the date. Okay, now. Ma'am, from Monday, my exams will start. Exams will start. Okay, then. When is your math exam? Uh, on 26th. Can you tell me the date? 26th, uh, 9-22. 26th. That means just a minute. Monday. It's 
monday right so so we have like tuesday and then thursday and saturday to revise so i think we can yeah. go for revision for ch some chapters i'll do one thing i'll prepare some sheets assignment sheets and then we can solve it together all of us okay ma'am yes sara oh yeah. sorry harsha so okay. that will give you a revision also and uh, some practice also and then we will finish these two questions also of capability okay then uh, you can leave we will meet on tuesday so just uh, do yeah so there's no test i'll give you some assignment sheets to solve we will solve it together okay okay, okay bye thank you thank you